Hi everyone, Zach here, and welcome to the prep video for Lesson 12. In Lesson 12, we'll be working further on our inventory functions, in particular setting up our stackable items. This prep video and this series have been brought to you by my Patreon sponsors. That said, let's make a start. As I already mentioned, in this tutorial, we'll be adding to our current set of functions in our inventory. In particular, we'll be adding the ability to add stackable items, and we'll be focusing a lot, sorry, focusing a lot on polymorphism in this particular tutorial. However, there is one concept around OOP, one fundamental area that we haven't really talked about. I have briefly mentioned it, and I think it'd be remiss of me not to bring this up before section four, where we'll really kind of explore this concept, and that is abstraction. So abstraction is something we have seen a lot of actually. We have this node, move to location or actor. We, we understand the word, move to location or actor. We get what it is doing. We don't understand behind the scenes what it's really about, do we? There are things in here that probably aren't clear. Well, what is this pathfinding idea? What is this lock logic or this continuous goal? Why, and we can understand our goal actor, our goal location, our AI controller. We can understand parts of it, but do we understand what it's really doing behind the scenes? Do we understand how it's using a modified ASTAR algorithm to create its pathfinding uh, abilities? So that's what that little thing is about there. Do we understand how the nav mesh interacts with it? Do we understand how the nav mesh is set up? In addition to this, we have used abstraction ourselves, but it's a little bit less obvious. Take this node from our sprint system. The check has stamina. Someone who gets a copy of this project, who hasn't put the time in to write this out, doesn't need to know what's going on behind the scenes in this node. They know it is checking if the person has stamina and that there's a bull return, true or false. They have stamina, true, false. They don't have stamina. They don't need to know the underpinnings behind the uh, scene. They don't need to open up the node to get what's going on. This is a form of abstraction. So abstraction is the art, quote unquote, of displaying only the essential information. Now, back this way here with this slide, I expanded out some of the details. You know, there's that little chevron down there I pressed to do this. We don't always need all those details. So we're hiding details, but in addition to hiding some of the details in a literal sense there, we are also hiding how the code is implemented. Now, to be fair, all the blueprint is a form of abstraction. We don't see the C++ going on behind the scenes. You know, if you understand what it's doing, fair enough, but we don't need to see it to know what the nodes do. It is a form of abstraction. So at the end of the day, this means we give only the essential information about the data to the outside world, to the people using it. That is actually what's happening in Blueprints. We're only getting the essential data. We're hiding, or Epic is hiding with Blueprints, the background details or implementation of what we're seeing. You know, it makes it really easy to script out games, doesn't it? That's one reason we're gonna use abstraction. We use abstraction for other reasons as well. Abstraction makes a lot of people new to C++, new to object orientation, feel a bit uncomfortable. And that is because abstraction, we, we, with abstraction, we want to know what's going on. And we have things like move to or check stamina, that's kind of obvious, we get that. But some things, you know, we kind of go, okay, I want to know what's going on behind the scenes, even if we don't need to. But again, let's talk about why we use abstraction. And I'm going to give a few examples. And of course, there are more than this out there. So it helps someone else who's using our code. Think about that check has stamina node. It's clear what that node does. They can see how to use it. They can see that it returns a check on if someone has stamina or not. They don't need to look at it to see what it does. I mean, they don't need to open it up to see what it does. It helps avoid writing certain functions over and over again. So if you already have something that does something and it's clear that it does it, it's gonna help you prevent from having to do it multiple times in multiple ways. Hint, hint, we're gonna violate that one. And it's gonna be part of your challenge for one of the upcoming videos. And, well, it avoids duplication and increases reusability. 
actually, that was the part that we were, I meant to say, hint, hint to. Um, when I said it helps avoid writing certain functions, this is also true with regards to, say, when you're doing pure C++, you don't need to write how a computer understands a keyboard. We already have a function that does that. We already have a header that does it. It's subtracted. We, we don't need to know the finer details, but we know it recognizes input and it parses that input into something that we can see. So it helps us avoid writing those functions. It also helps avoid the duplication of code. So a check stamina or say check if a slot on an inventory system is available. Hint, hint. Next video, there will be no prep. There'll be challenges related to abstraction and that's one of them. And it helps increase security. So there's a few types of abstraction. There's class abstraction and data abstraction. So think about the fact we set B is discarded to private in our inventory. Prevents something else from setting it. We have to use getters and setters. This can help deter cheating in multiplayer games. It won't prevent it, but it can help deter it. Um, and it prevents values from being set where we don't want them set. And it gives us control over that. All right, all of that said, that takes us through our coverage of abstraction. We're not going into details for what we're doing in today's tutorial because we're just consolidating what we've done previously and building on from that. This video has been brought to you by Patreon sponsors like Rian, Haynes, and Quad Manson. If you've enjoyed this prep video, please hit the like button down below. It really does help this channel out. And if you want to be here for the rest of the tutorial, please make sure to hit that subscribe and notify bell so you know when the next videos are out. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.